Hello everybody. This is a, uh, a short overview of the Gimme X hardware that I'm going to uh, to record here just to uh, point out all the major working parts of the board and a little bit about how it functions. Uh, here we have an assembled Gimme X board. Uh, on the top of the board you'll see the uh, the Cyclone 4 FPGA here. That is the chip that contains all the logic to replicate the GIMI functions and also implements the um, added features that we put into it. It needs a clock to generate the system clocks for the COCO and that comes from this little 28 megahertz oscillator here. This is the configuration flash for the FPGA. It holds the code that configures the FPGA with its circuit. Uh, on startup, it loads that before the machine starts running. You have a connector here for um, VGA and the buttons on the button board. There's the JTAG header for programming the FPGA. This is the S-Video header, That's these three pins right here. You have a ground and uh, chroma and the video signal. These buffers right here are bus transceivers. LVC 16245s are what does any needed voltage translation from the COCO system to the, the FPGA, which is 3.3 volts. So there's a lot of signals running in, um, in these, and there's directional control where needed as well. Um, this little two-pin header here um, is used with greater than 512K memory boards to supply the upper two address lines, you know, like the Boomerang E2 or the Triad 2 megabyte board would need that, just a wire running over to it from there. Um, the rest of the stuff up in this portion of the board has to do with the analog video out for the composite and the S video. Uh, these caps are coupling caps for various parts of the circuit. This is the chip that does the NTSC encoding, an AD725. This is a small uh, dual gate inverter for flipping the sync signals for the AD725 because they're inverted from what they need to be on the Coco's RGB port on the bottom. And the only other thing on the top of the board would be these caps over here which are for part of the voltage regulator circuits for powering the board and the FPGA in particular. So we'll flip it over here and we'll take a look at the bottom. Now here you have a lot of little parts. And um, we got the regulators here. There's 3.3 volt, uh, 2.5, and 1.2 volt regulators that's required for the FPGA and the other components. Uh, this right, this group of resistors right here is the DAC for the 15 kilohertz video. It's generated here and routed to both the RGB port on the bottom of the COCO as well as to the AD725 through some other circuitry uh, to generate the analog video. There, or the NTSC video. Uh, a lot of these resistors here are for the VG, are part, make up the VGA DAC. They're both 9-bit RGB DACs. Um, these are for the outgoing sinks on the VGA most of these caps right here in this area are decoupling caps for the FPGA there's one on every power pin 
And then this little guy here is a uh, Schmidt trigger buffer um, that goes from the reset line to the FPGA to let it know when the system is powered up so that it can start doing its job. Now, these other parts here, these resistors and caps and all up and down this side here are part of the NTSC video uh, system. The voltage needs to be coupled and divided down and, and stuff to uh, be at the proper levels as it's being prepared to be converted by the chip. This little capacitor here adds some additional capacitance to the reset line. It holds the system in reset longer so that the FPGA has time to load its configuration from the flash chip that we saw on the top of the board. And then it's loaded and it waits for the signal from the buffer here to let it know that the system is up. Now this part here I had to devise some sort of plug for the PLCC socket and that's what I came up with. It basically consists of some single row headers that are sort of... Uh, I work with them to get them in the right configuration and stuff and then they're soldered We're using a little jig to the board and then a 3D printed plug is inserted to make up the bulk of the plug and that works really well the size just has to be correct to uh, fit the socket firmly and provide good pin contact that is about the size of it takes quite a bit of um, work to build one of these it was pretty interesting to develop. So that is basically what the Gimme X hardware consists of, aside from the button board and cables and, and whatnot. And I guess that's about it for this video. So thanks for checking it out, and uh, catch you later.